Hello everyone and welcome to this short presentation for editing for geoscience communication. I am the Chief Executive Editor Sam Illingworth and I've been aided in my task by Anna Benzel from the Copernicus team and this is basically just a short presentation to hopefully guide you through the process of the various steps in using the back-end system for editing. So what will happen is that someone will submit a article to geoscience communication and then myself or one of the other executive editors will get a email to alert us of that fact. We'll then go into the system and we'll, we'll be presented with a screen that looks like this. And then what will happen is based on the keywords that you gave us as authors and uh, editors and based on our expertise of knowing you and what you're capable of, you're capable of many things, we go in and we make a suggestion. So, for example, let's say that uh, there's a paper in here that's to do with um, science festivals and science galleries and I know that um, Lewis is an expert in this and so I, I, I tick him and then what will happen is that Lewis or whoever I've nominated will receive um, an email asking them to go into the system and then they'll be presented with something that looks like this. So at this point as an editor you can either decline and receive no further emails from us whatsoever because you're very very busy absolutely fine you can decline because you're busy or it's out of your scope in which case we might pester you in the future if we're unable to find another editor for this paper or you can accept and if you do accept you need to declare whether you have any competing interests um, and what those competing interests look like so if you just look at the policy on competing interests first by clicking on that that will give you a good indi indi indication what will happen then is if you accept you'll be assigned as the editor and you'll then be asked to make an initial decision. So you'll be presented with something that looks like this. So at this point, what we ask you to do is to scan through the manuscript, make sure that it's sensible and make sure that it's in scope with um, geoscience communication. You can look at our aims and scopes um, to remind yourself of this. And if you're unsure, just please feel free to drop me an email. Now, at this point, what I'd recommend is don't really go to town on it. As long as it's sane, as long as it's not insulting anyone, and as long as it's within the scope, I would recommend starting review and discussion, which means it goes into geoscience communication discussions. If you think there's like quite a lot of typos that need picking up, you know, feel free to put through technical corrections. And if you think there's a massive, you know, issue in there, put in minor revisions. But I really wouldn't do too much work at this stage other than give it a sanity check and make sure that you're not asking too much of your, your reviewers and again that it's not saying anything insulting. Now what happens is if you click on start review and discussion you'll be presented with a screen that looks like this. You'll then um, be asked to pick what areas you think it goes into whether or not they correspond to what the author has also suggested and you'll also be asked to see if you think it's a potential highlight paper. So is it particularly newsworthy? Again, go to this newsworthy research guide to get an idea of that. And you can give a comment to me and the other executive editors to say why you think it's newsworthy. And we have the final say on that. Um, so the other options you've got available are, as I said, start review after technical corrections or after minor revisions in which case it goes back to the author and then you make another quick edit pass on it you can reject totally again maybe because it's impolite or because it's um, completely nonsensical or you can reject because it's outside of the journal scope now what often happens is people will send papers to us because they want to get it published but it's not a geoscience communication paper it's maybe an atmos paper or a biogeoscience paper now if you think that it relates to one of the other um, papers journals in the Copernicus stable just tick one of these boxes and it will automatically then go to that journal and the author will be passed through that process so that's a really nice neat way of doing it now let's imagine that you've started review and discussion so what will happen then is you'll be asked to nominate some referees now the author will suggest some you can also have um, your own that you just pick from the top of your mind or you can go back here to the system and you can actually use the subject and keyword to pick the list of referees that we have on the geoscience communication system. We're always looking for new referees. So if anyone you know would be um, good, please do suggest them. What will happen then is once you've picked um, a number of referees, you will um, you also have to say whether or not you allow, to allow them to report after the deadline's expired. I would say yes in this instance. 
Now, these numbers here all mean different things. The, they mean basically how many papers the referee is um, currently handling, how many they've handled this year, how many they've rejected this year, how many they've decided not to handle this year. The two numbers to really look at, I think, are these first two. If this is more than one, it means they're refereeing more than like more than one paper, which is quite a lot. If this is quite high, it means they've refereed quite a lot this year. So they might be quite busy, but they're also quite reliable. So what happens then is you'll then be asked, OK, um, are they the first reviewer you're going to use or are you going to have them as subsequent reviewers, in which case you can kind of line them up just in case one reviewer rejects, the second rejects, etc. So once you've got your reviewers in, what will happen is it will go into geoscience communication discussions. There'll be a period of time in which um, other people can leave their comments as well as the reviewers. And then at that point, you'll have to make your decision. So the author will have had to respond to the comments and you will also have a couple of um, reports from the reviewers. So you can look at something like this. You can see that they've marked it as excellent, good and good. And they think there's a few minor revisions that are needed. So that, that's quite straightforward. But you might have another comment that looks like this where it says it's all quite fair and they would recommend major revisions. So major revisions mean that they're willing to review the paper or not after it goes through that whole process again. And it's your judge as editor to basically make the decision of which one you agree with to read the paper through again and to, to come to a final decision. Again, if you're unsure about anything with regards to that, I'm very happy to help. So once you've made your final decision, um, by looking at not only these reports, but also the detailed report um, from the referee comment, then I would really start looking at that. At this point, you then have a post-discussion uh, decision to make. And if you um, basically, at this point, you can either publish subject to minor revisions or, public, or reconsider after major revisions or just reject completely. So minor revisions means that the author has to make all the decisions that they've said that they will do in their comments on geoscience discussion, and then it comes back to you. And major revisions means it goes through the whole process again. Again, I wouldn't reject in this instance. So if you decide to send for further review, again, you'll be presented with a screen like this, which asks you to send it out to um, another couple of reviewers um, and you can make a, and then at that point you can review and send out to more uh, referees. You then have to make a final decision. Um, so basically after it's come back, after they've made the edits that you recommended, then you can publish as is, publish to set technical corrections, a few typos, ask them to make some more amendments because they haven't addressed all of the issues or again, send it out through the whole process. So this is at this point, this is when they've edited it based on your recommendations and they've sent it back to you. Now you'll see at this earlier stage, um, so straight away after it's gone through geoscience communication discussions, you can no longer just accept as is or with technical corrections, as that was causing a lot of issues to the editor. So what happens is it goes for discussion, it comes back to you, and then they have to make the revisions based on what they've said they'll do. After all of this, don't worry, it comes back to the executive editors and we're able to make our final decision. And if we think there's maybe a conflict of interest or um, a, a, a something's gone awry, don't worry, it, it's on us. So that's hopefully summed that up quite nicely. If you've got any questions, please give me an email, contact me at any point, And thank you so much for all your hard work as editors. Thank you.